their friends and their fathers. We asked Anderson Cooper, anchor of CNN's AC360 and contributor to 60 Minutes, to take on a different sort of assignment this morning, talking with pal Andy Cohen about fatherhood. Well, this is weird. <laughs> it is a little weird. Oh, well, it's very weird. <laughs> Your whole body posture. Am I weird? Yeah, you seem like formal. This is. Not I a suddenly different version. feel very vulnerable. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. <laughs> You need to do your Barbara Walters Jedi thing right now and make me feel comfortable. I was going to start this off. So like it turns Larry. out interviewing okay. your closest friend exactly. is not so easy. I met Andy Cohen nearly 30 years ago. He had really long hair then and was a young producer at CBS News. Over the years, we've become really close. We vacation together. We are taking a mystery shot. Spend New Year's Eve together. And both of us decided oh, to become dads hurts. in our early 50s. He's very lifelike. <laughs> yeah. That's Lucy, Andy's daughter, who just turned one. His son Benjamin is four. I have a three-year-old son, Wyatt, and a one-year-old named Sebastian. So what's Lucy done today? What is, she what's went to music in? class. Oh, yes. Oh, it turns out we both wanted to have kids for similar reasons. That's right. Your mom loved that Peggy Lee song, Is That All There Is? That's where I was. I was approaching 50. And I heard that song in my head. I was like, there's got to be a greater purpose for me. This is wonderful, and I absolutely love it. But this is not, there has to be a greater purpose. How has parenting changed you? How are you different? I mean, I think it's changed me in every way. I mean, I think I, my priorities have completely shifted. I think my sense of accomplishment has totally changed. And even just getting your kids breakfast and getting them out to school. When I drop him off at school, I'm like, you did it, dude. That was a rough <laughs> two and a half hours. You know, like, you did that. Do you feel, I, I mean. Yes, I do. Has Wyatt moved to a toddler bed yet? No. What is your obsession with toddler beds? Well, uh, call me when Wyatt moves to a toddler bed. It is How hard hell. can a toddler bed? Oh, you are messing <laughs> with your life. Basically, what we're all doing, with all due, is keeping our children in a cage, which is <laughs> the true. crib, okay? <laughs> no, I mean, they can't get out. It's not a real, it's a, it's a beautiful, <laughs> you know. But, like, the toddler bed is a nightmare. That's an express because way? Because they now <laughs> have free will. Uh -huh. And they are coming to you at all hours. <laughs> all of the rules, no more. The lines are blurred. And the power shifts. Uh -huh. Young Benjamin holds the keys uh -huh. to the castle. Andy writes about his new life with kids in his fun and fast-paced new book, Daddy Diaries, The Year I Grew Up, the third in a best-selling series of diaries he's written. But yeah, I know. I'm trying to get this off, but I can't. It's about the high highs and low lows of being a single dad who also works long hours in the center ring of an often manic media circus. He has two radio channels on Sirius XM, a book imprint, this is Mariah Carey's a late night talk show on Bravo, and he presides over the Real Housewives franchise. You said you sat in Julio Iglesias' lap. Yes. As an executive producer and host of those drama-filled reunions. I think this book is really as much a statement about pop culture in the year 2022 as it is about being a father or my life and what I did. How so? What do you mean? Well, because I think it's a reflection on how pop culture works in a weird way. The sheer number of like celebrity encounters you have is it's like, oh, Megan McCain texted me and Cher and Jane Fonda gave me advice about raising a girl. I love dropping names. <laughs> and I feel like if you're going to write a book like this that's inspired by Andy Warhol's diaries, you, you better to. be prepared to drop some names. And I think that's one of the reasons why I latch onto this format so much, because I think it's fun. When you're hosting a talk show, you're interacting with everyone who's kind of in the mix and in the zeitgeist. And I'm certainly trying to create water cooler moments that feed into that pop culture machine. There's a lot of stuff I learned about you in this book that I, I hadn't known. Which okay. I, so, uh, you subscribe to a service that emails you every morning with clippings anytime your name is mentioned? On television. Are you insane? 
Why would you do that? I think it's interesting. <laughs> what do you, well, of course you think it's interesting. It's about you. <laughs> yeah, Why exactly. You, well, I mean, I don't send the clippings to you. <laughs> I mean, it's for me. It's, it's my seems, own thing. I mean, it just seems... I always like to take stock on where I am in the world. You say, I can't believe how much my life has changed, how much I'm building for my family's future. It's a heaviness I've never felt, but also a sense of sureness that feels good. W what is the heaviness? Well, you know, it's interesting. I've never, as I think you know, I am not someone who worries. Right. I am not someone who walks around. I've never met anybody who is as happy and optimistic and enjoys their life more than you. And I think this year, for the first time, I think having Lucy, my second child, I think suddenly I was like, wow, I have two kids. I'm doing this alone. You obviously, you have help. Yes. And doing this without a partner, did that give you great pause? I'm happy to say it didn't. I, I just thought, I wanna do this and I'm doing it and I know it's gonna be really hard and I don't know what that actually means. Does it, has it changed the way you think about finding somebody to be involved um, with? I mean, is yeah. the, the bar a different bar I for so. what the person needs to be like? Yeah, I mean, I think that some, you know, go-go dancer that you would be trying to set me up with three years ago <laughs> Maybe wouldn't be the... Have I tried to sit you over the go-go dance? No, but <laughs> why haven't you? <laughs> anyway. But are you really ready to, to... I don't know that you're ready to have a, a... A partner? Somebody there all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got two kids here all the time. <laughs> so what makes you think I'm not ready? Like, have I not shown enough that I'm settling down? I mean, what do I have to prove to you? Good morning. Good morning. Andy often Instagrams about some of the joys. You're crying because you want to stay at the supermarket? And frustrations of being a parent. And I've noticed he's starting to sound a little bit like his mom, Evelyn Cohen. But I wasn't sure how to mention it to him. Do you find yourself becoming your, your parents? One of the things I realized in writing the book is that I am becoming Evelyn Cohen, who looks for and finds things to worry about. And I now am in my bed with a carousel of worry mm -hmm. churning in my head. It's not fun. It's not who I am. I'm like, who are you? Who is this guy? What do you worry about most with them now? As a single parent, I just worry about being everything to them. And I want to be everything to them and I know how impossible that is in a weird way. If I spend three hours with Ben and then I have to go to work, you know, you're at work and you're like, did I spend enough time with Ben today? If Ben tells me that I'm his best friend or he grabs for my hand to hold it or um, he cuddles me extra tight, I mean, there's not gonna be a bigger win in my day than that. Hmm. that's sweet. Mm, you're sweet. <laughs> Marry me. Do you want to get married someday? To you? <laughs> no. Um, was that a proposal? Are you proposing? <laughs> do I want to get married? I got to tell you something. <laughs> not only do I love love, but how fun would my wedding be? <laughs> 